guys, it's me, Val Toxic Free. Welcome, thanks for clicking on my video. Okay, I keep starting this and for some reason, um, I'm normally Billy No Mates, but for some reason I keep getting messages as soon as I start a video, so I have to start it again. So, today, um, silent treatment, well, a form of silent treatment, which is stonewalling. Um, it is a form of torture. Um, it's basically to take control over a conversation or well not a conversation it's see bleeping away it's um it's manipulation it's torture it's to make you feel like you have no say in anything it's just to make you feel completely rejected um it's it's to take complete power over the victim um to walk around stonewalling you basically like like a stone or a wall and you could end up talking to a brick wall because that's how you feel um, it's not nice um, I've written a few things down because as you know I'm stupid <laughs> yes I shouldn't keep putting myself down but I do that it's one of my little traits is what I do before the people can put me down I put myself down I think we've all been there um, so the silent treatment can be used it's kind of like it's, it's a form of I'm so popular, what can I say, it's bleeping away. It's a form. <sighs> I'm really crap at doing videos because something always interferes with it, but I can't complain. Um, yeah, it's it's just, a silent treatment is kind of like, well, it's, it's, the, it's the main kind of form. Obviously, you've got branches off the silent treatment. You've got your ghosting, you've got your grey rocking, you've got um, stonewalling. Uh, just kind of like an umbrella that covers a lot of different kind of um, control, conversation control situations. Um, some benefit us um, and some benefit them. So I'm going to go into it in a little bit more detail because I've always, I always got confused when I would hear people talking of grey rock, stonewalling, ghosting, no contact. I didn't know which was for who, um, what they meant what the difference was and I suppose I tend to want to do videos on things that I can I get confused of mind you I get confused quite a lot so it's surprising they haven't got a video of every single thing in the world that I'm confused about um so yeah it's I'm just going to try and explain a little bit and also use it through my experience and go into my experiences of things um I find that um sometimes explains it a bit more with me and my strange examples and my strange experiences that I've had um I'm still getting bleeps Oh bless, somebody's, somebody's typing me messages over messenger. I'm trying to... I can't answer them, can I? So, um, yeah, they'll walk around slamming doors. They'll just look at you stony-faced. Um, they'll just make you feel rejected and feel really nasty and feel really horrible. Um, they can do it on Facebook as well, on Messenger, in text, in emails. Any way of conversation any form of communication they will use that against us um yeah stonewall stonewalling is basically um an action they'll do to make you react to it which is what most things they do they want us to react um by just taking away the conversation by controlling it and we have no say i've been through it so many times in different different kind of scenarios it's the worst thing I say that on every video actually it's the worst thing but it really is it's the lack of control mind you I think since we've obviously we all know that you don't tend to know about narcissism unless you've had narcitis that's what I call it um, before that you're confused because everything that you know is based on love so when someone's ignoring you or someone's slamming doors not replying to texts it's, you think it's all built on love, so it hurts you deep, deep down, and you can't understand it. It's very confusing, we know that. As soon as you've been through a narcissistic relationship, then you can look back, and I think you tend to have more control, because we know that they're doing it to torture us. They, like my other video about the words, they just, they just pull words, or don't pull words. They either use words or don't. They're tools. Words or no words, there you go, <laughs> that's the question. Um, they just do things to hurt us. So I think once you've been through a narcissistic relationship, um, somehow it's more controlling, somehow, as in from our side, not from theirs. We know it's controlling from theirs, but we can kind of like, it's not not even accept it. I actually still don't know the, 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 the reasons why it makes you feel a wee bit better, but you can think, wow, 
and you can just walk away and I think a lot of the thing is that you can just if they give you the silent treatment um, it's hard if you've got children involved again you can just walk away and I think if you just know they're giving you the silent treatment walk away from them because what they end up being is just a complete knobhead sitting on their own being quiet in a room it's not the silent treatment they're just sitting on their own not saying a word which is sometimes quite nice if you get told if you get if you get angry at being stonewalled again you see this is it they 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 react to that because once you've got angry they'll react to your angriness and then call you crazy one um you could ask them questions like you know why aren't you replying to my messages why aren't you answering my emails why aren't you replying in a text and they'll just come back with i'm working um leave me alone i've got stuff to do i'm not always on facebook um they'll just reply with texts like that that just kind of shut you down they'll just shut you down and then you're kind of stuck because you can't come back with well you could you can come back with that i know you're not working or i know that you're not doing this you're doing that but you end up just starting an argument so it's best just to let them get on with it and they'll just turn around and say oh you always argue why do you want an argument i'm not replying to you because you want an argument it's so manipulative. Stonewalling's more than just being quiet. It's an excuse for them to come back at you after you've gone crazy, after you've felt rejected, after you've you've felt so useless, so worthless, and your value has been taken away, and you feel like, what the hell have I done to be ignored? They'll then think, now it's time to talk. Now I'm going to hurt her. And then they'll start throwing things at you, going, I don't want to speak to you because you just argue the whole time. And then when you do argue, they'll go around to their friends and say, I don't understand her. She's so abusive to me and I don't do anything. But you see, this context is twisted there. I haven't done anything. She's so abusive, but I haven't done anything. They haven't explained that I haven't done anything means, oh, I've been given the silent treatment for days. But they don't say that, do they? They just say, oh, I haven't done anything. I didn't say anything to her. But she's so abusive. She's crazy. Context. Context of their words. Manipulation. Some people might um, think maybe sometimes, well, is, 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 he, is he ignoring you because he just wants to get away from you? He just wants to have some time out. Um, stonewalling, silent treatment is not... It's, it's not a kind of a healing thing for a relationship. It's not time out. Don't ever think that they're doing something to you because they want time out. Um, if you want time out, you'll explain to the other partner after you maybe had time out and say, sorry, I need your time out. I do apologize. Um, I can't stand out arguing. You both aim for the same goals. If you tell your partner that the time out, time out, I'm gonna do that, isn't time out and you tell them that you're breaking my heart and you're hurting me doing it now if it's just time out and if they love you they'll they'll think so okay next time I need some time out I'll explain to you that I just need some time out and that's that's how I have to deal with my situation if I'm, I'm upset I need time out if they continue to do the time out or the silent treatment and knowingly that you're hurting and knowing that they're hurting you, that is a choice. That is when it's abuse. That is when it's torture. That is when it's manipulation. When they know they're hurting you, you know, there's a, there's, that's a difference. Some people do things, some people do stupid things, but they don't realise they're hurting you. And once you tell them they're hurting you, they should stop. Narcs don't. Narcs will continue hurting you. So if you're feeling any kind of rejection over and over and over again having had conversations with the narc saying please please you're breaking my heart and they continue to repeat it that's when it's abuse i don't care if you want to box it whether you want to call it a name whether you want to call it you know you, you're not going to leave somebody until you realize or you find out if they're a narcissist i don't care what name they are whether they're a narcissist a sociopath just a toxic person an arsehole a knobhead you name it if you are in agony and if you are changing your persona and you are feeling rejected, devalued, worthless, all the negative traits that you should not have in a relationship, it's abusive. That's all I can say to that. A lot of people, a lot of couples will argue a lot. Arguing's good, well, as long as it doesn't turn sort of physical. If you can have an argument, it's like a conversation that's slightly loud. Um, but as long as after the argument, you, you, 
you go to your corners, you breathe, you take have a fag or a cigarette, depends where what country you're from. <laughs> um <laughs> sorry, it's my humour, it's really not good. English humour. So if you have your time out after arguments and you've come back together and you've talked about it and you both apologise, then that is probably good. Arguing is good for a relationship in a weird way, but it's when they go go quiet, don't speak. It's not going to help anybody. Yeah, and they need to apologise. Truly. See, the trouble with narcs sometimes, they come back and apologise and you think, oh, he's not a narc, he's apologised. But yeah, narcs apologise. Narcs apologise for their own gains. Narcs will apologise to um, put you at ease and make them make them come across as a normal person. They'll apologise just to kind of... just to get you back on board, to shut you up, to come across as normal, but they're not normal. So be careful that their apology is a, is a true one and not a false one. Um, just to fool you. Um, love it shouldn't be abusive. Love makes the victim weak and I think that's why of the two people in, in a re relationship I always say this is the person that um, loves the least or cares the least is in control of the relationship. Um, love makes you weak. It's a bug. It's the love bug. Love makes us weak and gives them control because they don't love, so they aren't weak. Does that make sense? The fact that you're being ignored in a relationship, it can lead to so many different types of emotions. Anxiety, rejection, um, anguish, severe anxiety. I got severe anxiety. So many times I, um, I just couldn't cope. It's not nice. It's um, it's a form of gaslighting. It's just a lack of empathy. They'll just watch their victims squirm. They'll enjoy the control. Stonewalling is somebody just standing there silently watching you hurt, watching you squirm, watching you cry, watching you beg. And they'll walk out the room. So somebody with empathy could not do that. I could not do that. I couldn't stand and watch somebody in absolute agony. Except for them. <laughs> but not somebody you're supposed to love. You'll never change a stonewaller. You'll never get somebody who lies, who manipulates and who does this kind of control technique. You'll never get them to change. Even when you think you might have changed them, they'll have just swapped onto another manipulative technique, which is probably just lying to you, pretending. You need to just get out. We let our emotions get the better of us in stonewalling situations where we will just kick off and we get abusive and they make us toxic. And then we get called all sorts. And we get smeared. So that's one of their techniques to actually make us say, do and act in ways that we wouldn't normally do. We're told we're psychos because we kick off, because we get really angry and upset and hurt. We get told we're sociopaths because we get upset, get angry and get really hurt at their control over us, their manipulation, and their no contact, their silent treatments. So yeah, I've been stonewalled a few times. My video I've done a while ago, that was when I used to text or email of a messenger, he'd look at my messages. My somatic narcissist and my covert narcissist both, both did the same. Both did the same, except one went a little bit further with one. The, the, the covert um, didn't reply to my message. Well, actually he came on messenger and he replied to my message within a split second and disappeared. And I replied back and he went, and I was like, where, where have you gone? I've been sat waiting to talk to you all night. You said when you came back from being out, you'd have a chat, you know, you'd say hi. He just said, I'm going to bed, I'm tired. And I said, I've sat up all, all night waiting for you. And he didn't reply. And I kept writing, where have you gone? I'm worried. Please speak to me, please speak to me. He didn't reply. I ended up trying to ring him. He didn't reply. And this is how it went on. Another ex, the one that cheated on me with the, the woman had the baby. I actually was ringing him one night. I think he was with her. And I would, it would ring sometimes and then other times it would go engaged. And I think what he was doing when I was leaving my frantic messages, crying, saying, I'm going to call the police. I'm going to have to call your dad. I don't know where you're at. He was listening to my messages and then not replying. And then I'd ring again and I'd, it would ring. And then another time I'd ring again. I rang about 15, 20 times that night. And sometimes it would be engaged and sometimes it wasn't. 
So I'd leave by leaving messages going, I know you're listening to my messages. I know you're listening to them. Why can't you reply? And this went on. So that wasn't nice. Um, again, covert used to go and leave me for days on end, say I need some time out. I've got to go. I'll call you when, I, when I've had some time out. And this would be three, four, five days later. It's just not on. We're banging our heads against these stone walls. So we need to stop. We just, it just gets us depressed and helpless and they just disown all responsibility for what they're doing to us. So, you know, so yeah, if we can just ignore them, they're just a dickhead sitting in a room on their own. They're not stonewalling or not silent treatmenting us. They are just sitting on their own in a room being a knob. So we can make them do that, make them just sit on their own. If they start stonewalling, you walk away. Just walk away. Don't even let them do it. They will have the power of you. They've got to have power of us. We've got to react for them to have power. If we don't react, they don't have power. So we're connected to them through love. They're just connected to us through, through power. Um, dopamine's released in our brain when we're in love. <clears throat> when we're in love, we get dopamine released in our brain and it's like a drug. Um, and then obviously cortisol comes in. When you get dumped, you get cortisol. I've gone through this before. It's painful. It's literally painful. And they don't have it. They don't have empathy, love. So they don't have dopamine. Um, and then when we are dumped, we just get the um, withdrawal symptoms because we need the fix of love, they don't, which is why they're in control. So I hope that's made some sense, that basically stonewalling is an action for us to react to. It's an action of control. They will walk around the house. I had it on my honeymoon. I actually, I actually looked for the video of my honeymoon. Oh, I don't know why I did that, it made me feel sick. And it's my honeymoon, my husband on my honeymoon is stonewalling me. I look at myself crawling around after him, calling his name, trying to be all sweet and babes, please speak to me babes, like that, and that's pathetic. He loved it, he stonewalled me. So that's basically what stonewalling is. So I hope that made sense. They don't love us. They have no tie to us. We're tied to them through motion. They're not tied to us except through power. When they leave us on our own, we pine. We want them. We need them. When they're at home without us, they don't miss us. They can't miss us because they've got no empathy, no dopamine, no adrenaline pumping through their brains and their bodies that are going to make them miss us. They got on with it and then they look at the, what time is it, four o'clock, oh, it's been a couple of days, I might just give her a text, a little smiley face, see how she is. I think it's time I got her back. Oh, I've punished her enough now. I'm bored. I want some sex. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So anyway, I wasn't going to be a long video, I don't know how long it's been because again I've got a message at the top. So guys, um, again, probably grey rock next time. Um, ghosting. All the things that I got confused about. It helps me out as well. So, take care. See you soon.